Hello, this is Watch Rebout with another watch review, and in this review, we are looking at a watch which is quite controversial actually. It's the Thomas Earnshaw Long Case. Why is it controversial? Well, purely because of its RRP. A ridiculous £3,250. Now, you can use my code WIA30 for 30% off. That will make it £2,275, which in itself is, you know, a massive chunk off. But would you spend that much? on a Thomas Earnshaw when you can buy respected brands such as Omega uh, for the same kind of price or Oris for instance um, you know watches with a lot more a lot more heritage so what we're just going to do is have a look at the watch and you know we're going to park those questions to begin with just going to have a look at the watch see what it's like um, and then we'll, we'll bring that um, back up later on uh, in the conclusion of the review so this is no doubt, you know, one of their, their greatest achievements. It is fully Swiss made and it's using a Swiss automatic mechanical chronograph, the Salita SW500. And just looking at it, you know, you can rightly so say it is an impressive looking watch and I'm not going to deny that at all. You know, I think in my eyes, it's one of their nicest looking watches. Um, there are a couple of little niggles that I will share with you, but all in all, you know, it's a whopping great watch and uh, you can see that it really does look quite impressive, but does it justify the price? So let's discuss the uh, specs to begin with. So uh, I've already mentioned the price with my code WIA30, WIAA30, 2275. Let's talk about the size first of all. So 43 mil in diameter, a tall 15.5 mil in height, and a lug to lug length of 50 mil. So it is a statement watch, no doubt about it. You know, it's larger, it's, it's on the large side for a dress watch. Um, uh, and it certainly does make a statement as well, especially being that it's, you know, a, a gold case. Uh, and you can see, you know, these reflective uh, elements and the, uh, the blue is quite prominent on the sapphire crystal as well. So it really does, it is an eye catching piece, no doubt about that. Um, Weight-wise, it's 106 grams, so it's actually not that heavy. It's quite easy to wear, despite the size. Um, and the height, you know, 15.5 mil is on the tall side, but naturally, uh, automatic mechanical chronographs are, uh, are a tall movement in itself. And you'll notice we have quite a few different uh, bits of thing, bits of depth going on with the dial as well. So again, that adds a little bit of height. So it is with good reason that it is tall. Um, I personally haven't had any issues with it actually wearing it on it with a suit, which I have done a few times. I think it looks pretty cool as well, uh, having that little bit of extra depth. You know, it's, it's real eye catcher and it does uh, create a, an impressive um, um, uh, amount of wrist presence. Uh, the water resistance is five atmospheres or 50 meters. So, you know, you're not going to go swimming with this watch anyway. Don't go swimming if you were thinking about it. Uh, but it does have that little measure of protection just in case, uh, in case you do have an accident or it gets splashed, for instance. 22 mil lug width, I think, is a reasonable size as well for the 43 mil diameter case. I think that works nicely. It goes down to 20 mil at the buckle and a uh, two year warranty as well. Moving on to the movement, then the Salita SW500 is basically an ETA 7750 clone, uh, which in itself, you know, is probably the uh, the best option. Uh, for mechanical chronographs, you know, it is the go-to uh, uh, movement for a uh, mechanical chronograph. Uh, so the Salita SW500 is a clone on that. Um, I haven't reviewed too many watches with the Salita movement, but they've always seemed to be reliable. Uh, they feel great to use as well. Nice, solid clunks uh, to start it and stop it, and a decent snapback as well. Everything is exactly the same, more or less. So we've got a 25 joules inside it, a high beat rate of 28.8 thousand beats per hour. So that runs at eight ticks per second. And if we look a little bit closer, so we obviously have our main hour and minute hand naturally, but then we have the big second hand is the chronograph seconds hand. The subdial at 12 is a 30 minute counter. Our subdial at nine is our running seconds hand. Then our subdial at six is a 12 hour uh, counter for the chronograph. So I'll leave it running for a little bit longer uh, just so we can see these little hands progressing slowly. 
so this one, I've measured it and it's coming in at a very impressive plus 5.1 seconds a day. That is obviously pretty much within COSC specs. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if they have done any sort of uh, tweaking to it, adjustment to it at all, but it's nice to know that, uh, you know, even if it does come out of the box, it comes out at a decent rate. Uh, it's also worth noting that they have put a really nice custom rotor on it as well. It, I think it is just a sticker, but it's not as crummy as a lot of these stickers are. It does actually look pretty nice. They've done a good job on it, but we'll have a look at the case back a little bit. Uh, later on with the uh, when we're looking at the case so if I just give the dial a quick wipe we'll have a look at the dial to start with so uh, first impressions you know you can see the uh, slightly transparent base to the uh, the dial and I think that works really nicely yes you can only see uh, you know the the rest of the day and date wheels uh, and also a very slight bit peeking through of the uh, the top plate of the movement but i think it's done in such a nice subtle way that it works really nicely uh, it has that slight blue kind of hue to it as well which is passed through to the uh, the rehout uh, also uh, so i think they've done a really nice job on that uh, making it a feature and then the sub dials uh, you know the uh, the indexes and the, uh, the the information around it are applied uh, on a high, slightly higher level, as you can see there, uh, and our, uh, we have uh, these, uh, ro uh, these gold uh, rings surrounding them as well. Fully polished, so they reflect the light really nicely, as you can see there. And uh, quite simple kind of hands as well, which I think work really well. They don't, uh, you know, they don't draw your eye too uh, much from the Dauphine, uh, pitch Dauphine hands, which are also polished, and you can see uh, provide a nice bit of reflection there. Um, let's have a quick look at the loom uh, as well. So there's loom only on uh, the two hands. So then we have the day and date indicator. They have a uh, nice applied uh, gold uh, border to them. Again, really, you know, neatly uh, manufactured. Uh, no complaints there. So this does bring on to bring me on to my first uh, minor niggle, and that is this uh, very lightly applied Earnshaw. Uh, logo I mean it, it's a little bit cheap and tacky for a watch costing you know over two grand I would be disappointed with that I'm not going to lie um, and then the next niggle which is even more of a niggle to me these hour markers really nice design you know really they look cool and they have these sort of like black uh, dent uh, inlets however these black inlets are just stickers and then some of them they're misaligned like on this one down here like, where's that pointing to up here, like, well, where's that going? This one as well, you know, you're just expecting a watch costing £2,000. You need them to be straight without a shadow of a doubt. And that, for me, is one massive disappointment. Um, you don't necessarily notice it, but it's just there. And, you know, you spent your money. You ex you expect decent quality finishing. Um, so they're my two niggles mainly. So let's move on to the rest of the dial. What I really do like is this framed... Uh, higher raised uh, outer edge as well. We have our rehout with the tachymeter, um, but we also have uh, numerals applied. See the, the rehout sort of levels out, and then we have these applied numerals surround the outside, which I think look really smart, and uh, they frame the dial so nicely as well. Um, yes, they're, on a, they're a little bit on the light side, but in my eyes, you know, they actually look like they're supposed to be light. Um, you know, a little bit on the thin side, mainly because they are f so snug underneath the, uh, the the sapphire crystal. I think it just works really nicely. And for me, that is one of the key design features, you know, quite, quite a small design feature, but one of the ones that really has uh, drawn my eye to this watch nicely. So uh, moving on to the case then, if I just give it a quick wipe, it's uh, fully polished gold. And uh, we have a uh, Earnshaw engraved on the side there. Uh, nice and neatly done, uh, you know, taking a leaf out of um, Invictor's book, but done it a little bit more subtle and a little bit nicer. The whole finishing of the case is pretty magnificent, to be honest. Um, you know, polished rose gold is a real eye catcher, and this is certainly an eye catcher. You know, the, just the dimensions itself and the fact that it's fully polished. These are like angle, uh, nice angles on the bezel, 
uh, and the uh, slight bulge to the, the case as well. You can see a bulge there. It provides such a beautiful uh, array of reflections. Uh, you know, if I just pop it on my um, slightly over seven inch wrist for reference. You know, if I'm just wearing it, you can see a load of beautiful reflections coming from the case. Uh, so that works really nicely. Moving on to the uh, lugs, uh, you know, quite vintage inspired style of lugs. I'm not entirely sure if these screws are actually functional or not. Probably not because we have quick release pins. Uh, so, you know, usually what you'd expect is these two bolts would be uh, keeping the pin in place and you'd unscrew one and it would slip out the other side. However, from the quick release pin being there, it's obvious that you can just remove the strap easily. So these are probably fake, which again, you know, a little bit disappointment. Um, they look good, however, you can't tell that they are fake, which in itself is a, is a good plus. But again, is that the kind of thing that should exist on a watch costing a couple of grand? Probably not. Uh, the pushers, really nice, decent, thick pushers, great um, size, easy to push provide beautiful feedback, work really nicely. And then the crown, um, a nice traditional style crown, very good grip on that as well. Nice and easy for winding if you do want to wind it. Uh, a little bit difficult to pull out, but you do have that little dent at the bottom for you to get your nail under, which is nice. And then finally, um, the sapphire crystal is uh, domed. You can see there, single dome. So we do have a little bit of uh, distortion there. And uh, we've discussed it. A little bit earlier but we do have a very good anti-reflective coating really does provide a beautiful flash of blue at certain angles and it does you know create a, a wonderful feast for the eyes flipping it over then let's have a look at this case back and this movement so the case back is stainless steel uh, secured in with a bunch of screws six screws various information uh, nice and deeply engraved actually no less uh, we can see here we have limited edition at the top with a uh, with a serial number there um, so nothing too crazy um, nice large exhibition window does the job of showing off the movement nicely um, you can't necessarily tell either that they don't match up you know stainless steel against the rose gold you, I see that quite a lot to be honest uh, because you know if you have rose gold on rose gold sometimes they don't quite work so well uh, in terms of uh, screwing on however it's not a screw in you know it's a it's a just applied with with screws isn't it so again not sure uh, why they opted for that but never mind so the movement uh, I mentioned it earlier here's the uh, the rotor we have a very cheeky little kind of sticker applied to it uh, but it does look very classy very elegant they've done a good job on that and just look at the beautiful finishing on this Salita SW500 very uh, free uh, moving uh, rotor as well but it's just a very nice movement if you look at it. Yes, it would have been nice if there was a little bit of purlage or uh, you know, Geneva stripes maybe on the, the top bars. Uh, however, I just really like seeing the movements uh, working. So if I just stop this, can, can we see the moving? Yes, we can, so that's stopped, started again. So it just works so nicely uh, and uh, you know, very uh, highly regarded uh, automatic chronograph movement there. Moving on to the strap then. So uh, we have a, a black strap. Uh, I find the, the combination of black with rose gold always works really nicely. If I just pop it on, very nice subtle, uh, supple uh, leather as well. Good quality, very nice and malleable. Uh, comfortable on as well, you know, it's not stiff or anything. Maybe they've upgraded their strap for this watch because I don't always find Thomas Earnshaw straps to be the best. You know, sometimes they can be a bit stiff, a bit awkward to wear. It does, however, does have, it does, however, have the uh, the usual uh, tang buckle which i find design wise works really well as you can see you know it's technically an e for earnshaw which is very clever the only issue i have with it is that all of the pressure is put on this thin bar here so what you do find eventually is if i just pop it on where this e where's the where this uh, bar rubs all of the pressure is on that one section there and you do find that th that does uh, affect the quality of the leather quite quickly. So you will find that that will start degrading just around that section quicker than a normal tang buckle. So yes, it does look good and it's nice design. 
uh, functionality wise probably not the best polished edges with a brush top with the Earnshaw logo very lightly engraved on the top there that's the same buckle that they put on all of their Earnshaw watches okay so would I buy it Definitely not. Uh, I think the price is absolutely ridiculous. There's so many better options. Uh, you know, even with the code WIAA30 -I -I -A -A for 30% off, it makes it £2,275. If I desperately wanted a mechanical, a Swiss made mechanical uh, chronograph, automatic chronograph, uh, I would probably have a look at, first of all, Formex and Christopher Ward, Steinhardt, Oris. Longines, you know, there's so many different options. I certainly wouldn't go for a Thomas Earnshaw. Yes, Thomas Earnshaw, you know, Thomas Earnshaw started off with going with automatics, you know, around the 500 price range. Uh, even then, 500 was a little bit much for, for the quality of the watches. Now, obviously, they're trying to go a little bit higher class, but they've already, you know, sort of made their mark in the cheaper market. And when you're charging this much for a watch, you know, you've got to make sure the little things, the little bits of details are there. You know, we've had a look at the uh, the dial in particular. You know, unfortunately, there's a couple of little things there which just shouldn't happen on a watch costing over two hundred thousand pounds. Uh, two hundred thousand, two thousand pounds. Um, so that's a little bit of a disappointment. However, if you can get it for a you know for a steal price, uh, I'm talking. I, I personally would probably be happy paying five to seven hundred pounds for this watch because at the end of the day i mean just look at it it is it is really good looking it is very high quality in a, a build as well it's just those little you know uh, little bits and bobs uh, that i've mentioned previously it's such a chunky watch and it's lovely it's they've done a really good job with the design and there's no question you know it's got a great movement in it and it is swiss made um so that in itself you know will will warrant a bonaris rrp of you know a thousand pounds realistically a thousand pounds is a is a realistic price for a swiss made automatic uh, mechanical chronograph so if they had marketed it around that price then yes i would probably be having a different um different thought process but they've just shot themselves in the foot a little bit with the ridiculously high rrp when you can get so much better watches for that price so anyway lovely watch just too much money this was the Thomas Earnshaw long case and that's what it's all about. So thanks for watching guys. Let's just stop the chronograph, watch it snap back. Nice, uh, nicely done. This was the Thomas Earnshaw long case and that's what it's all about. So don't forget to like, subscribe and also comment your thoughts below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.